In this video, uh, we will start to learn the final topic of this quarter, which is uh, Brownian motion. Okay, and let's try to generalize step by step from a, uh, what we have learned from a Markov process. And let's first consider a uh, random walk. Um, the random walk, let's say uh, this is uh, Xm. And which is, we, we can define random walk alternatively using um, this definition. So x sub n is a sum of uh, n iid Bernoulli random variables. So that, for example, um, the probability of zi is 1 is the same as the probability of zi is minus one and they are both uh, one half. Um, then we can show that um, this x sub n apparently because of the independency and uh, um, this identity distributed we can show x sub n is a Markov chain. And uh, uh, it's exactly the random walk we have learned with transition probability from i to i plus 1 and i to i minus 1 uh, being 1 half. Okay. So this is uh, the first random walk. And then we try to um, convert this random walk to a continuous time markup chain. How do we do the conversion? Is we simply we use this random walk as the underlying discrete Markov chain for this continuous Markov chain. And then we simply add um, this uh, uh, arrival time, or say jump time, because every time um, we're making a jump um, from uh, i to i plus 1 or i to i minus 1. Um, so we add jump time. How do we add this jump time is we simply let this s sub t instead of simply we sum up these n random variables uh, we sum up these k random variables but the total number of Bernoulli random variable we sum up is related to the time t and this n of t and where this uh, n of t and for simplicity let's assume uh, the parameter of this n of t is 1 and this n of t is a Poisson process with rate 1 okay um, so now um, this becomes a continuous time market chain which simply we have this uh, uh, into arrival time being exponentially distributed. Um, so we can simply say, let's assume um, t0, which is 0, and is less than t1, and etc., um, be the time of uh, transitions. Then, uh, what happens is, uh, then we can see that this x sub n is nothing but uh, s t sub n uh, plus, okay? And we've showed this uh, uh, last time. And now we want to uh, figure out, so here we, uh, we can say we continuify a discrete random walk, a discrete uh, Markov chain and now we want to compute uh, uh, so we're curious of what's 
the uh, expectation, or say expected value, and the variance of uh, this continuous time uh, market chain. The first one is pretty simple uh, to um, figure out. Uh, we've learned, and uh, we can uh, make use of uh, the conditional expectation we learned um, in previous quarter. And uh, um, then by the conditional um, distribution of this s of t given uh, this n of t being a fixed value, and we compute this nested um, distribution, we'll obtain. This is nothing but uh, e of uh, n times e of n t times e of a single this uh, Z sub k, okay? And this is nothing but uh, lambda t times the expectation of uh, this Bernoulli random variable right here, which, which is apparently zero. So this is zero. And also for this one, we can make use of uh, the conditional uh, variance formula which we have derived in 130b. And this is uh, can be computed by expectation of the number of the summons times the variance of a single this uh, z and plus the expectation of zk squared times the variance of, uh, of n. And because, because this is 0, we take square, it's still 0. And we only consider the first term, um, the expectation of uh, a Poisson distributed random variable uh, with parameter lambda t, it's lambda t, so we've derived earlier and then multiply with the variance. Because uh, uh, we don't have uh, um, we, because uh, um, the expected value of zk itself is zero, so uh, the variance is nothing but expected value of zk square. And we can, uh, uh, we can sim simply compute it uh, this uh, by the Bernoulli random variable right here. So uh, expectation of zk square is nothing but uh, um, now uh, zk square for zk being one and minus one are both one. So this is one times 0 0.5 plus one times 0 0.5, and this is one. And as a result, this is nothing but a lambda t. And because we have assumed lambda being 1, so this is t. Okay. Now, uh, we got to take a leap of faith. And we're going to convert this continuous uh, time marker chain to a Brownian motion. And what we want to do is, is we do a scaling. Um, how do we do the scaling is we make the jumps um, infinitely often, okay? Here, the jumps occur at time t0, t1, and uh, um, we know that the interarrival time is of uh, exponential distribution and uh, uh, the total wait time is of gamma distribution but uh, um, here and we want to make jump infinitely often to make this uh, is we make it uh, using a scaling which is an n and we let 
then we let n go to infinity. Here we let uh, we simply define a new s sub n of t, which is uh, um, first we scale the Poisson process, the time being n times t. So if we multiply an n uh, to the t, uh, the time, even though the time is just t, but the Poisson process, the time, the Poisson process sees is n times t, which is much, much bigger. So, I mean, the value of this n of t, probabilistically speaking, it can be, uh, even the mean is uh, much bigger. Okay. Now we still sum up from k equals 1 and dk. Um, and we got to make uh, um, the variance uh, normalized. So here we divide a 1 over square root of n. And apparently, uh, this is uh, equal to, by the definition of s of t right here, uh, this is 1 over square root of n times s of n of t. Okay. And now uh, we try to compute um, the variance and expectation. Again, the expectation of the uh, is 1 over square root of n times the expectation of uh, s n of t. And apparently, this is uh, 0 again. Okay. And to, to compute the variance, uh, we simply make use of uh, the variance formula, because uh, we already know what's the variance for this one. Okay. Um, we simply replace the t with n times t. Uh, for the variance of s of t, and we simply make use of this formula. We have this is 1 over square root of n squared times the variance of uh, s of n t. And like I said, this one is we simply replace t by n t in previous formula we have derived. So this is 1 over n times n of t, and this is nothing but t. As we can see, uh, the continuous time markup chain, uh, its variance uh, becomes t. Okay. Um, and keeps this in mind, um, the Poisson process, this n, capital N of nt, now this rate still is lambda, okay, but now um, it on average jumps uh, every 1 over n, like uh, that amount of a time. Okay, so originally it's like a jump just one time uh, with lambda equals 1. Um, and then for uh, s n of t, because we have normalized um, we have normalized um, the SN of t with this 1 over square root of n. So what happens is uh, each jump is still up or down. Okay, It's still up or down with uh, equal probability. However, the size of the jump is now only uh, 1 over square root of n. Okay. Um, as a result, um, we have the following. By central limit theorem, uh, we let this n go to infinity. As a result, um, this s uh, sub n of t, which is uh, square root of n of uh, the summation of k equals 1 up to n of t, z of k, right? Uh, it converges to the normal distribution of the same uh, mean here and variance here as a result. 
this one converges um, in probability to the normal distribution of zero mean and t variance. Okay. Similarly, uh, we can show that. Similarly, we can show that because of uh, because of the uh, independency we can have uh, s sub n and for a t that's greater than s as n goes to infinity, um, s sub n of t subtract s sub n of s, and this is 1 over square root of n, and we simply we sum up uh, from uh, this time s, so uh, we sum up from n times s plus 1 to n of n of t and z of k, and we can show that this converges not to nothing but the normal distribution of uh, zero mean and variance t minus s. Okay. And now we're almost there. So in the next video, we're going to rigorously define uh, the limit of uh, this uh, s sub n continuous time Markov chain. And we'll call it a uh, brownian motion.